Go to Psalm 119, if you would, please. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. You know, we're living in a dark world. We're living in a world that likes darkness. I want to talk to you today about the light of the world. The light of the world is our message title. And how that light has an effect. We're going to deal with some natural things and and think of... Uh, Verse 105, please. Psalm 119, verse 105. And we're going to talk today about how that light makes a difference and how important light is and how that God uses light in the natural world and, yes, in the spiritual world and how important it is for people to come to the light. And uh, so... Of course, we know the light of the world is Jesus. We sang that song this morning. But also the Word of God is light, isn't it? We find in Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And thank the Lord today that He has not left us without a light in the Christian life. I thank the Lord that we have a Bible that has not only been given to us through the inspiration of God, but also that it was kept by the preservation of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, an earlier uh, earlier psalm, thy word is forever settled in heaven. And in another psalm, it says that thou shalt keep them and they are preserved forever and ever. I believe that God not only gave to us his word, but he preserved to us his word. And we can have a light today in our life. There's a sad thing today in the world that is lost is that people are searching for light. They're searching for understanding. Much of what we have today in false religion, if you go back, you will find is a a result of what was happening in the late 1800s, a period called the period of enlightenment, which actually brought the world into even greater darkness than it was in before because it brought forth great religions that were without the true light of the gospel. They pointed to good works. They pointed to good men. They pointed to good prophets or prophetesses instead of the truth, which is, of course, we know Jesus Christ himself. And if you're like me today, sometimes you've looked around in the world and you almost feel sorry for somebody who is not saved, who wants to know what is the truth. What is the truth? Pilate said that too, of course, when Jesus stood before him. He said those words, what is truth? And when a person is in that point of their life, it's confusing. You know why? It's dark. In darkness, you can't make out shapes. In darkness, you can't see color. In darkness, you can't see where you're going. In fact, in darkness, you can't see where you are. Darkness is a a disparity, if you would. And it is good to know that God not only made light, but he also gives light. And he is the light. So when you're talking to someone and they're saying, oh, I'm, I'm part of a new age understanding. I, I'm looking for an answer. New age gives the idea that there's, there's answers out there. They're looking for light. They're looking for uh, a, a remedy to the things in life that doesn't make sense to them. But you know, if we just open our Bible and we look into the face of Jesus Christ, we will find the answers to every one of man's problems and every one of man's questions. The light of God's Word and the light of the Lord Jesus Christ gives all answers, gives all remedy, gives all resolution. It's good to know that today, friend. And the world needs that in their life. And we need to certainly take the opportunity to share that truth with them. So the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Light is something true that we see here. I'm going to just talk about a few things that light does. And I think we can follow along pretty good together today. The first thing I want to talk about is light will always reveal truth. Light will always reveal truth. Go with me to John chapter 17 in verse 17. And if I told you behind this door is a Mercedes-Benz, and it's waiting for you. All you have to do is give me $6,000, and I'll give you a $75,000 Mercedes-Benz. I might be able to create some deception 
by darkness if you cannot see what it is that I was promising you. But the moment the door is open and you're presented with what I actually sold you, you will not know what truth is until the light is shining forth and making evident what truth is. There's a lot of switch and bait going on with religion today, or bait and switch, I should say. And uh, there's a lot of promises, but people end up in hell often over some of these false promises. The Scripture says the hope of unjust men perish. Many churches are giving to someone a truth that they call so-called truth, and then when the person ends up in hell, they realize, my goodness, I believe something that's a lie. The light brings forth the truth. Would you go with me there again to John chapter 17, and we'll read together what Jesus said about the truth. Light always reveals truth. Look at this now. Again, remember, God's word is truth. And so God's word brings forth light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. John 17, 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So if the word of God is referred to in Psalm 119, 105 as a lamp and a light, then that light is able to bring forth truth. I want you to see this here just a few minutes together. John chapter 5, verse 39. Look at what Jesus said about the word of God. You say, oh, that's a book, that's a book of lies, that's written by man. Be careful what you say. Because when it comes to the Word of God, it will reveal truth in your life. Again, this is why some people do not enjoy church, because when the Word of God is preached, they say, whoa, wait a minute, that's a little too bright for me. How are you, by the way, when you wake up in the morning, the last thing you want is somebody to shine a bright light in your eyes. And most of us would go, and throw them covers over our face and say, no, and I, I, you morning people, you just go off with your crazy self and bubble all around and all that. It's 9, 10, 11 o'clock every day, and I'm like, I'm not even awake yet. It, every day, no matter what time I get up, no matter what time I go to bed. And light's not a very appealing thing when you've been in the darkness all night. So don't be surprised when the world rejects the gospel message when you initially give it to them. you got to give their, their, their spiritual eyes a little bit of time to adjust to the light and to realize, oh, 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 okay, God has a plan for me in the day and not just to dwell in the night. I'm beginning to see now what this Christianity thing's all about. It takes time. So John chapter 5, Jesus was trying to show them the truth of who he was and They thought they were children of God. They thought they were uh, Abraham's, you know, uh, heritage. So therefore, they're God's blessed people. They're God's children. And Jesus, right in the middle of that, says something so very clear in John chapter 5, in verse number 39. 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. You think. So what was he saying here? You're in darkness, boys. You're outside of the truth. If you open your Bible, if you open the Scriptures and study and read, you're going to find out the light's going to come on and you're going to realize, I am your Messiah. I am your Savior. And he says, watch, search the Scriptures for in them you think that you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me. Here's what happens when somebody hears the Word of God preach. They go, Oh, wow, I'm lost. Oh, wow, I need Christ as my Savior. The light's not going to come on until the light comes on. God help us. That's why we continue to stay in the Word of God here, continue to preach the Bible, continue to go through the same verses. And can I say this? You want to win someone to Christ? Share with them the Scripture. Share with them the Scripture. The Bible says you must be born again. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Why do we do that? Because we want the light to come on so that truth can be revealed. Here's the problem. Before someone's saved, where are they? They're in darkness and they're deceived. God is the only one that can take them out of that darkness and show them their need of Christ. Notice something here in John chapter 16, Jesus saying, people say, well, you know, Jesus was a good man. He was a prophet. He was a good teacher. 
No, he was more than that. He was the truth. And every word that Jesus said, you can count on it to be truth. Even the ones that don't make sense to you. Remember witnessing to a man years ago and he said, that just doesn't make sense to me. How can a man who was a murderer be saved and go to heaven? And I said, I'll tell you how. There's a man named Saul who became Paul in the New Testament. God changed his life. God forgave him. God gave him a new life. And the reality of it is it doesn't matter what any of us have done. But if a person gets to Christ and is born again, that person can be saved regardless of what they have done prior in their life. That might not make sense to the rational thinking. Even us as born-again Christians, we sometimes treat people like, now that guy's went too far. It happens. But the Bible says all can be saved. All can be saved. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, you believe that? I believe that. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we find this here in John 16, verse 7. Notice what Jesus said. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. And again, I've said this before. We need to say it again. Jesus Christ was either Lord or He was a lunatic and a liar. But we know, of course, that He is Lord. He did not lie. How many times did Jesus say the words, verily, verily? Indicating to the one who would hear His words, He is truth and what He speaks is truth. You can count on Jesus' words. Think about that today. How many people are reading religious writings from some Dalai Lama? I mean, if a man's name sound con- was Confucius, that's uh, confuse. It, to me, I just that would tip me off immediately. This guy's confused. His name is Confucius. Um, and there's many people, again, in this world that have written books, have great wisdom, great you know, philosophies and people are writing and and reading these books and studying these works and yet the truth is there's no light in them and people will die in their sins unless they come to Christ, unless they come to hear the truth from Him. And of course, you know what Jesus said in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's important for us to speak truth. Look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. And this is the reason why many hated Christ. And this is the reason, listen, why many hate the Christ of the Bible today. It's very easy for the world to embrace the babe of Christ this time of the year. But to embrace the Christ of the Bible who preached righteousness and judgment to come and how that men were wicked without Him and how that men needed to be saved And how they were headed for hell, that's the Christ they don't want to hear about. The one in the manger today is fine for them. But the Christ that lived righteousness and died for their wicked souls, that Christ is hard for the world to accept today. Galatians chapter 4 verse 16, Paul said it this way, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Why don't people like the truth? Why don't they like the light to come on? Because in their life there are things that are revealed. There are things that are pointed out there are things that are now seen that once were hid. Here's something interesting to think about too. The Bible says all things are open before God. Did you know God already knew what you are? God already knows all about you. People think, well, you know, I can run from God. I can hide from God. I won't go to church. God already knows exactly where you're at. God already knows every single thing you've done wrong. And the Bible says, according to um, John chapter 8, go there if you would. Look at John chapter 8. We'll see something here that happens. John chapter 8. Two things. Paul said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Has it ever occurred to you why people hated Jesus so much when he was here for three and a half years? And can I say it this way? Why the religious people hated Jesus so much? Because he told them the truth. He told them the truth. Why did Herod cut John the Baptist's head off? You say, well, Herodias uh, 
Philip's, uh, or Philip's wife's daughter. Uh, it, was, it was her. She, she said, whatever you, you want to do, I, I, whatever, he said, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. And she said, give me John the Baptist's head and a charger. That's why he did it, right? No, the Bible says John, the, that Herod feared the people. He didn't want to kill John because he feared the people. And there's something unwritten in scriptures which simply says is, Herod said, this is my chance to finally get John for all the preaching he's done against me in my life. You know what he told Herod? It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. You're an adulterer. That's why they hated John. And that's why they hated our Savior Jesus, because he spoke the truth. He spoke the truth. John chapter 8, the Bible says, in John chapter 8, we find in verse 84, look at this, this is pretty blunt. He's, they're saying, come on, are you Abraham? Are you from Abraham? Who gave you this authority? And he says in verse 40, But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto him, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You or ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. You therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. Friend, the reality of it is, light will always reveal truth. And here's the reality. When truth is is shown forth and light is seen, then we find something else that happens. Men will be hateful. Men will respond to the point in John chapter 8. Look at verse number 6. Why were these men so angry at him? Look at John chapter 8, verse 6. It says, verse uh, 2, Early in the morning he came again to the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now watch the next words here. Now Moses in the law commanded us that should be stoned, but what sayest thou? Now that sounds good. They sound like people who love the truth of the Bible, don't they? You with me? Moses, commandments, hey, but verse 6, this they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. Their purpose was not to declare truth or to affirm truth. Their purpose was to catch Jesus because he was the living truth. He was the convictor. He was the convincer. And we find here, look at this if you would. We find the answer. And again, why do I say this? Because again, point number one, light reveals truth. Watch this. And again, verse uh, number six, this they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. I do not believe that happened in 30 seconds. I believe one by one, the men that were standing there that day, Jesus wrote something on the ground that he knew about their lives that was contrary to the word and will of God, and they were convicted one by one, and he started, the Bible says, with the eldest. Each one down through until the very last, he pointed out the truth of what they were and who they were. God's light brings forth truth. Now, this leads us to our next point. If it reveals truth, then that shows to us also that it reveals error. It reveals sin. It reveals the flaws. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 5, if you would, for a moment. 
One of the things that was done when a vessel was broken is in their days they had glue as well. Maybe not the same type that we have today. But those vessels that were broken, they would take and they would glue the pieces back together. And often those vessels were tried to be sold as new vessels, as perfect vessels. And the way that an individual would find out if that vessel had been broken or if that vessel had been mended is they would hold it up to the light and they would see the light come through the cracks of that vessel. So it is with God. He takes the light and shows to man his inconsistencies, shows his flaws, shows his sin. And this is often why people hate Jesus Christ and his word. Would you go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 13? We'll read that together. Notice what it says there. Look, look at what verse 10 starts out. Or look at, go all the way back to verse number 8. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done to them in secret. But watch this. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So again, light reveals the truth. And listen to this. Light reveals the errors as well. The light of the world through this gospel, through the Bible, and through Jesus. So again... We notice it says it makes manifest all things, not just the good things, but also the bad things. Light shows the things that are right, and it shows the things that are wrong. It shows the things that are in place, and it shows the things that are out of place. John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. We see there John chapter 3, verse number 16. Notice what it says here of Jesus, John three sixteen. talking about his life. The Bible is the light that makes things manifest, reveals truth, reveals error, but Jesus himself. It says, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. So Jesus is the light. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Why? Because the light shows the truth. The light reveals the truth. The light reveals what really is in a person's life. And people often do not want the truth. They do not want to come to the light. They have, according to the Bible here, they hate the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. But verse 21, He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. So we see the Word of God According to this, shows to us, Jesus in the Word brings forth truth, and truth brings light, and it reveals sin, and it reveals error. So we see, again, light reveals truth, but it also reveals error. But there are some things that life, uh, light brings into this world. Light brings, listen to this, life. Light brings life. Did you know that? Light brings life. A person without Christ is in darkness... They have no light. And can we say this together? They have no life. Jesus said in verse 16, should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at John chapter 1 here, guys. John chapter 1. I want to show you some more verses on this. See the correlation just like in the world. How does a tree grow? How does a tree live? Life. Where does it get that? From the light, from the sun. It's alive today because of the light of the sun that shines down upon us. Out in this world is millions of examples of what Jesus Christ has done on Calvary to save people from a devil's hell and to give them eternal life. It's all around us every day if we'll just see it 
It's all around us. Everything in this world has life because it has light. God gives it light. In fact, you say, wait, 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 wait. hold on, hold on. Pastor, I've seen videos. I've seen those creatures that are miles down in the depths of the ocean. And you know what? Pastor, there's no light down there. It's complete, utter darkness. And you know what? You'll find out them creatures got light. And they go, where did, I, I, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. How, how can there be, they got lights all over them. They're, they're, they're three miles down in the, in the ocean and, and there's no light at all. And all of a sudden they've got all these little antennas and they got lights on them. Guess what? Light is life. You know, we don't understand that, but God understands that. And I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that not only is God going to put his seal and his mark upon our foreheads according to the book of Revelation, but somehow I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to see that that light of Jesus Christ is actually going to be part of who we are. The light of life is going to be going through our bodies, our supernatural bodies that God is going to give us in heaven. Just as Jesus was transformed in front of them, into that shining glory, I believe every believer that's saved and is going to be in heaven, we are going to receive a glorified body like that that's going to be full of not only eternal life, but light. And can I say this? When you look into the eyes of somebody who knows Jesus Christ on this side of glory, you can sometimes see a little bit of that light, can't you? You can see it in their faces. You can see it in their countenance. You can see it in their eyes. The light of life. It's a wonderful thing. You've done it. You've met someone and you said, are you a Christian? And they'll go, yeah. And I say, and you'll say, I could just tell. There was something about you. I could see it. And sometimes, if we're right with God, they should be able to see it in our life. They'll say, you're a born again Christian. You'll say, yes. How did you know? They say, I could see it. I could tell. The light. Amen? The light. There should be some light in our life. And Christian, if you're not walking in the light, you know, you're going to lose some of that joy that God has to give in your life. John chapter 1, I'm getting ahead of myself because we're already out of time. Uh, 1 John chapter 1 is where we are. You're already there. 1 John chapter 1. Notice what it says in verse number 1. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes in which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you may also have fellowship with us. And it says, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Hold your hand here. I'm in the wrong book. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. If you didn't believe in grace before, you're going to need it today. Put up with my confused preaching. John chapter 1. One person that's not going to glory in his flesh today is Paul Zander. Amen. If anybody's going to get glory in this place today, it's going to be Jesus. John chapter 1. The Bible says in verse 1, thank you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life. Light brings not only revealing truth and error, but it also brings life. Light brings life. Jesus Christ came into this world and brought life when we were under the curse of sin and death. In him was life, and the light was the light of men. Now I said to you before that the world is an example of that. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 20. I'll give you a scripture to prove what I said there. Romans chapter 1, if you would please. Verse 20. Notice what it says here. Romans chapter 1, verse 20. God believes his creation shows to man a picture of the gospel, a picture of eternal life. Romans chapter 1, in verse 19, says, Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, 
even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. God is saying you can see in this creation, magnificent creation, the fact that we have a creator, the fact that life comes from light and that Jesus Christ is that light and we need him today to give us life. In fact, the Bible said it's this simple in 1 John chapter 5. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. It really is that simple. Light brings life. In fact, it's really neat to see the results of light. Go with me here back to 1 John. I know we were there a minute ago, but we're going to read the rest of it. Life not only, or light brings not only life, but it also brings joy. Christian, today, you are at a time of the year when the sun shines the least. Do not be surprised if you have a little bit more sadness this time of year than you do throughout spring and summer and fall. It is a proven fact that when the light recedes and the days are shorter, that depression grows greater, that sadness is a problem that people deal with, it's just a natural part of life. And it's proven that it has something to do with that sun. So I'm just going to throw something out to you that I've never thought of before in this relation. If the light out there, December 21st, the shortest day of the year, has gone dimmer and dimmer, maybe we just need to spend a little more time in our Bibles this winter if we want to have some more light and some more life so that the sadness doesn't affect us the same way as it does the world. And many of you in here today would have to say, Pastor, you're right. This time of the year is a little harder for me than the rest of the time of the year. I don't feel as joyful. I don't feel as jubilant. I don't feel as excited. May we go to the light of the Word of God and to Jesus Christ and spend some more time with Him so that that can offset the physical that we're going to feel this time of the year. Remember that. You might need that come February. You're going to say, man, I feel terrible. There's just nothing making me happy. Oh, when's the last time I went to the light source, the, the source of life? Did I read my Bible today? Did I, did I actually look to God and say, Lord, give me something in my life today that I need. Give me the bread today to sustain me. Maybe our strength is little because we're living in a dark world, regardless of the seasons, and we're not spending as much time in the light as we should. I tell my wife every time I go through periods of depression and sadness and I just start to get like, ah, oh, I just want to throw in the towel. You know what I say to her? I text her and say, I need to just read my Bible because I know what I need. I just need to read my Bible. Just read my Bible until the joy of the Lord has returned into my life. The light. Light brings joy. Look at this. According to 1 John, it even says that. The Bible supports even the scientific uh facts of this and and psychologically light does affect us it does affect us alaska for a long time anchorage was the number one suicide rate per capita in the entire world you say how can that be three months of darkness it affects you it affects you first john chapter one and we're living in a dark world so if we Open the newspaper and read it every day and we're just watching the news and all this darkness. Don't be surprised if sadness is all over your life. You got to get it more light to get more life. You with me? Okay. It'll happen. You'll grumble and mumble and complain and be sad and be over. Woe is me. You'll have the Eeyore attitude. It's, it happens. You get in this Bible, you'll have a much... All right, I went there, so I'll just go to the next step. You'll be more like Winnie the Pooh when you get the honey and you're happy. All right? The Bible says it's sweet. It won't have that Eeyore attitude. So you guys understand that. So light, it brings joy. It says in verse number four, watch. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Light brings joy. God help us to go towards the light. Christian, if you're dealing with dark days in your life, it could be because you've went away from the light. You need to turn your heart back to the Lord. And God's desire to us is that our joy may be full. Paul said it this way, joy unspeakable and full of God's glory. 
When you study the Old Testament of God's glory being seen, it was referred to as the shining. It was referred to, forgive me, as his, as um, a shining light. It was referred to as a great light when the glory of the Lord was seen. So great was that glory when Moses looked upon the face of God for 40 days, he came back down from the mount and his face was filled with the light of the Lord. David said in the book of Psalms, Lord, who... There be many in this world that say, who will show us any good? Now, there's just nothing joyful. There's nothing wonderful to be happy about anymore in the world because it's so awful and there's terrorists and all this stuff going on. And David said this, Lord, let the light of thy countenance shine upon us. Would, would you let them see some goodness in us because you are a good God? May you give us that life and may they see that and say, I want that in my life. I need what they have. I don't know what it is, but I need that. God help us. And the last thing light brings is not only life, not only joy, but it also brings change. It'll cause someone to go in a different direction. Many studies have been put forth about light, and they'll take a plant and sit it there, and they'll put it in a box, and they'll put one hole over here to where the light comes in, and that plant will grow up and go, and go right out that spot. Light has an amazing effect on someone's life. It will change their direction. It will change uh, the things about them. It will even affect their growth. God help us to go in the right direction and to grow for His glory and honor. And of course, as we close here, John chapter 8, verse 12, and then John 12, 35. We're going to see two verses, last two scriptures. John 8, 12, and John 12, 35. I'm so glad that we have not been left without a light. Often churches are referred to as those old lighthouses, a place where we can send forth a message to the world that there is safety, but there is a haven of rest. Our prayer, of course, is that people will come to Christ, come to the light. In order for that to happen, they have to see the truth, the Bible, the truth of Jesus Christ, their truth and need to be saved. And, of course, the errors and the sin that is also revealed in their life that must be washed away by the precious blood of Jesus. John chapter 8, verse 12, we see Jesus saying here, Then spake Jesus again unto them, after the woman, if you remember here, was forgiven, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Do you feel lost today? Are you in darkness today? The Bible says that Jesus is this answer. In John 8, verse 12, He is the light of the world. He that follows Him shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And yes, the light is not always as bright to where you could see two years in the future. But you'll know where you are today with God, and you'll know the next step that He wants to take you in life. And that's the kind of light that God gives us in our life. It's a good light. It's a sufficient light. John chapter 12, verse 35. We'll close with this. John 12, 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walks in the darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. He said in another scripture that those that walk in the night stumble because they know not they don't know what's going on. Christian, God's been good to us to give us His Word. God's been good to us to give us His church. Don't take that for granted. Don't walk away from it. Don't leave it. Because the Bible says without it, we'll be like lost sheep. We, even as saved people, can go off and wander away from God in the darkness. But we need to maintain and to be in the light. The Bible says in verse 36, While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of the light. Let's bow our heads here just for a moment. Of course, first thing here today we have to ask ourselves, and rather greater, would we allow the Lord to try our hearts? And that is, are we saved? Has there been a time in our life when we came to Jesus Christ, bowed our heads in mercy and called upon Him in truth and said, Lord, be merciful to me. I need to be saved. I am living in darkness. My life has been just a one mess one world of confusion. I don't know where I am and I don't know where I'm going. 
The whole way through the Bible, light is an example of the salvation that comes. When the man and the Philippian jailer, in his night of his conversion, he came in, the Bible says, with a light, trembling, holding the light. The light was coming on. He saw his need of Christ, and he saw that he was the only way that he could be saved. And he said, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus, or Paul and Silas there said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Let's stand here for invitation. Perhaps you're here today and you're just saying, I'm, I can see the light, but I'm not walking in the light. That's what much of Christianity is today. They see the way they should walk, but they're going to stay close to it, but they're not going to stay in the will of God. They'll see the light but they'll stay just far enough away to where they feel a little comfortable in the darkness and a little comfortable in the light. But the truth is God didn't make us that way. It's a miserable life unless we're walking in the light of the Lord. That's where the joy of the Lord is. God help us to be there today. If there's something in our life that's keeping us, again, we're seeing it. There's God. There's the truth. There it is. That's what I should be. But we're not going to go to that light God help us here today. Let's be the one that says here, He that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest. Don't be the one that hates the light and says, God, I don't want to go there. Don't sacrifice your life and the will of God to dwell in darkness. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. 